I'm Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me for another BDSM United podcast. As with any new series, an introduction is required. Welcome to the introduction for our Setnax Sex Magic series. I was originally going to try to do this with our new podcast, the Heathens Podcast, but really... Uh, trying to do two podcasts is sometimes problematic for my schedule and whatnot. This podcast uh, kind of has a funny name to it. It's Setnak. It's uh, it is a the name of a Egyptian king in the past, and it is the taken name of a magician named Don Webb. Don Webb is a the former high priest of the Temple of Set, and he's just kind of a really interesting guy, and he wrote some really good resources that I like to use. I'm not a Setian myself, but I appreciate uh, the Temple of Set because they describe themselves as as an evolutionary product of human experience, um, a an experience that includes magical and philosophical work of many different individuals and organizations which preceded them, and that they uh, they try to make brilliant discoveries. And they try to examine secret and suppressed corners of history for valuable and useful material. And they insist on ethical presentation and use of the discoveries that they make. Now, they, uh, it's regrettable that they were caught up somewhat in the satanic panic of the late 80s, early 90s, uh, which drew from a lot of Christian propaganda, propaganda and superstition, led to a lot of urban myths about being baby-eating, blood-drinking psychopaths. <laughs> but my, my contact with resources and just um, and uh, Setians in general has been just really good and really positive. And I think that you'll find that the resources, while they in our past we've taken from a lot of different mystical traditions, this too does draw from uh, magic that is just uh, general in nature. It is. Uh, it's general in that it is applicable to all persons everywhere. It is useful and it works. And um, that's the thing that we like about magic and like about sex magic, or that I do personally, is that while a lot of people uh, will tell you that sex magic exists, they oftentimes won't tell you how to actually do any of it. Uh, the same goes with magic in general. They'll tell you that magic exists on some level, but they won't tell you how any of it is done or how it should be done. Oftentimes, they just tell you that it is a thing. And so that is in somewhat of an introduction. also want to speak on the virtues and the vices of initiatory magic. And that's what we're drawing from. We're type, drawing from a type of initiatory magic which is, um, works really well with sex magic in order to, uh, for personal growth or doing, uh, doing things that will heighten our connection BDSM is all is all about connection. It's about relationships. Very little of it is done solo, you know, just by ourselves. Uh, topping and bottoming and dominance and submission. Um, all of it is has one 
overarching thing in common is that it is something that is done together. It is something that is done in the presence of one or more people. Magic traditionally is more of a lone type of practice, but sex magic has the uh, the unique characteristic that it is done with a partner or done with another person uh, oftentimes. And so vices are those habits of mind, heart, and will that hold us back from our self-determined goals. They can be in, eliminated by analyzing the behaviors that support them and cutting them away. And virtues, on the other hand, are the qualities of mind, heart, and will that lead to an increase of being. They can be learned by studying the actions of those who possess those attributes and emulating them. The vices of magic, uh, we'll just go through a few of them, and then we'll go through a few of the virtues. This is good uh, introductory material because character precedes capability. And so you got to be somebody of good character. That alone, though, doesn't mean that you're capable. That doesn't mean that you have the technique to accomplish the thing that you're after, but having a good ethos, a good uh, character, is essential in being in transforming yourself to be the type of person that can use the tools correctly and use the tools well to accomplish the thing that you're wanting to accomplish. Uh, narcissism. Because magic focuses on self. There's a tendency to see the self as an object of worship. This is as useful as if the sculptor began to worship the clay. The initiate guards against this with humor, willingness to apologize, and asking themselves the question about any bad situation they find themselves in. How did my actions contribute to this? Hubris, because uh, the initiate does have access to mental states that oftentimes very few humans do. They can come to believe that all of the, their actions are justified. They may even come to believe that the truths that they've come uh, to by magic are universal truths. Becoming, becoming the same sort of bigot that oftentimes we flee from other religions over. The cure for this is with powerful, smart people that make you aware of how little you know. It's associating yourself with them and how much more room there is for achievement in your life. We don't want to be big fish in just a small pond. We always want to challenge ourselves and push ourselves into situations where we come across people that know more than we do. And it's you know, quite humbling. And it's also exciting. Forgetfulness of past orthodoxies is a vice. Since we come to a surface level understanding of of other, of other paths, we often think that we are over it. Um, those channels cut very deep in ourselves, just as they are in the world. If we don't understand this, we'll inevitably return to the bad habits of those that we thought we despised. The victim of the religious bigot will become a religious bigot. I know that I have a past in esoteric and Pentecostal types of Christianity in my own personal past. And if I, if I become too bigoted in that, I will oftentimes become a religious bigot according to the things. I will fall into that same trap according into, into magical things that I come apart. Up, up, come across. 
the former skeptic will disbelieve even the results of his own magic and will preach against it. Um, despair. Because of the immensity of the task of self-change, it's very easy to over, be overcome with despair. And once this happens, really, your initiatory, your magic stops. You have to keep, uh, learn how to keep a certain amount of pleasurable challenge in your life at all times so that fun, as much as anything else, will draw you back into magical practice. I know that this often is a vice with BDSM as well, is that you get into a place where you get into a rut. You start to kind of dig yourself a little mini grave and you... Uh, you lack challenging yourself with something new. And uh, you just kind of take on a bit of despair. Number five, attachment to the thoughts of another. When you've had your eyes open to the fact that the world is very different than society would have you believe, it's very tempting to embrace whatever first coherent thought uh, system that you encounter. You may pick somebody like Aleister Crowley or Plato or some nut on cable TV or, uh, you know, some gazillion year old, you know, system of thought. But in each case, oftentimes they've, you've stopped thinking on your own and you replace thought with a language that requires memory and repetition. Uh, an initiate will oftentimes look at all these things with a bit of mental force field in place, saying to, the, saying to you themselves, well, that might be helpful for me, but what do I think about it? Another vice would be obsession with magic. Magic, which is ultimately the manipulation of the mind, can be very entertaining, so much so that it can eat someone's life away as much as TV or spending endless hours on TikTok. Uh, a magician holds this tendency at bay with the use of things like a journal that integrates each operation into the overall scheme of their life. Um, we don't want to get ourselves lost in BDSM, or we don't want to get ourselves lost in magic or lost in any one thing. We want to know and try to notice and be mindful of the role that all of these different things play in the overall scheme of our lives. Emotional servitude. This will be our last vice. Uh, many would-be writers write only when the mood is right. Many would-be magicians only take care of their magic when the mood is right. <laughs> or when the moon or the planets are aligned or the, the wind is blowing from the left or the right. In both cases, people don't learn their craft, and they don't have the hard and painful breakthroughs that are as important as the easy aha breakthroughs. A magician knows that he or she doesn't follow his or her emotions, but that their emotions follow them. Uh, practice doing things that are difficult for the sheer power that it gives you over your emotions. Now let's shift gears for a moment. Let's talk about um, seven virtues. That was seven vices. How about seven virtues? Magical curiosity. Um, the level of the world that we operate on, this spiritual level, is maintained by the actions of coherent and transformative systems. They're seldom the systems you can learn about in, like, an occult bookstore. If true secrets were found in those kinds of places, then the customers would be the most powerful people on Earth. The true systems may have their broad outlines there or just in on places like TikTok or maybe even in podcasts like this one. But the hard work of finding out how these things really work is really your own job. Your quest for knowledge, 
will lead you into truly hidden areas that may require pilgrimages to ancient sites, research in dusty libraries, or picking up uh, some dead or additional language. Um, this whole occult industry is based on a few books about everything under the sun. It really hates the sort of seeker. Uh, it's really just looking for someone who wants to casually buy a book or take a course. But the true magical initiate knows that each answer leads to nine more questions. And the quest of getting those answers really is the path or journey that you're on. Um, the second virtue, quantifiable pride. You know, we live in a world that's very short on recognition, and people are afraid to recognize quality. It might overpower, or might empower, sorry, a rival, or make them aware of their own lack of achievement. Yet, as humans, we long for recognition. So we need to speak of, of our own real-world deeds. But in order to avoid the traps of egoism, we need to use a certain formula. We need to mention the real, real deed and then link it to the next real-world achievement that we're striving for. So, in other words, we need to attach our, our victories with goals. It'll let people know that you're a force in the world, and they'll, they'll begin to respect you. They'll know that you're going somewhere and that you're doing something, and they'll treat you accordingly. Uh, second, it plants an image in your own mind of your success so that you'll unconsciously be working magic for yourself to succeed. And third, it lets you know that you're a person of real worth. And it reminds you of how far you need to go in order to achieve those long-range goals. Number three, a sense of humor. If you can't laugh at your own mistakes, you really probably should think about giving up trying. If you can't laugh at the world, it's going to make you mad. Uh, laughter really banishes obsessions and it's a mark of someone who is truly autonomous and sovereign. Number four, openness. Many people are really insecure, and they leave li lives so tight that magic really couldn't even break in. They have rules about what to eat, when to sleep, who to fuck, what to read, how to vote. Really, every second of their life is filled with something. Magical faith, you know, is, will open doors for you. You should step in those doors to try new things and be very spontaneous. Not risky, but just open and spontaneous. True development will come to someone with the will to succeed long before it comes to someone with the will to control. Now, moderation. The magician knows that nothing outside of itself is essential, nor is anything really forbidden. Therefore, it refuses those paths and those people that have this one is the right way attitude. It chooses between uh, liberty and asceticism knowing that each is a distortion of the self. Neither addiction nor abstinence are answers of a person that rules his or her own life. So you definitely want to live in a place of moderation. Number six, synthesis. The late Anton LaVey was ahead of his game. He took useful aspects of life from a variety of sources, photography, fiction, sexology, really all of these different types of things, uh, music and film, all those things to form his system. 
Uh, a good magician looks for his tools in a variety of life experiences and doesn't draw all of his or her practice just from this thing that we call the occult world. Our last virtue, cunning. Magical initiate always has an ace in the hole for any situation. They don't put all of their eggs in one basket. They have cunning. It's a type of knowledge and thought formed by a complex but coherent constellation of attitudes and skills that you combine with flair, um, a lot of networking, wisdom, forethought, maybe a little bit of deception, observation of people's nonverbal cues, resourcefulness, vigilance, opportunism, and various skills and experience acquired over the years. It's applied to conditions which are passing, shifting, ambiguous, and to, to those magically potent situations which don't lend themselves to precise measurement, exact calculation, and ris rigorous logic. Well, that was it. This is our Setnax Sex Magic series on BDSM United Podcast. I'm Primal Piggy, and this is a intermediate. We want to see you become an adept at sex magic. And to do that, you have to be, get better at practicing magic. You need to initiate yourself. And in order to do that, you, there's some things that you need to know and really some things that you need to do. And we'll get into those in this BDSM United podcast. You can find all of our resources at www.bdsmunited.com. Thank you for listening today. I know that maybe it's strange to hear about magic on a BDSM podcast, but really it is something that we care about. And honestly, if you don't care about it, you don't have to listen. You can go to any other BDSM podcast out there, and uh, they'll all be talking about a lot of the same things. We like to talk about those things too, but we like to bring you things that we believe in and we believe will make you make your BDSM better. Magic is going to make your BDSM better. And uh, we really believe that. And thank you for listening today. It was a joy speaking with you. And we'll pick it up again in our next episode in this series. It was a joy speaking with you. And I'll talk to you again soon. <laughs>